having created, God goes on admiring everything around him. Nanak laments and want to know how many people are singing his glory. How many are singing his glory? He says, I cannot imagine. What can I think? He alone is the truth. He alone is the creator. He is never born and never dies. All that is manifest that you see around is his creation. And everything in the creation, can you imagine how many things has he created? Everything in the creation has invisible effect of his hands. How can I know that how many people are singing or chanting his glories? Wherever I turn, I see glory is being chanted. Such a magnified vision he has. Everything is his creation. It is he who has created many colors, all feelings, emotions, and so many objects of creation as Maya because these are ephemeral. One moment a feeling comes, next moment it is gone, something else comes, a wave arises and disappears. But during the time it exists, the feeling exists, a wave exists, it chants its glory. He goes on admiring the entire creation and thus he glorifies all this. In this composition, he goes on glorifying that. What Nanak has experienced is something unique and that is what he is going to. He is saying in many ways. He says God has created the creation and then he goes on at watching and admiring the entire creation. He has created it first. Just as you create something and don't you go on admiring it in many ways, looking at it from different angles. It is like a painter who paints a painting. Then he moves a few feet away to watch. Then he moves to the right and to the left to watch again. Sometimes he watches the painting from the window and then from the door. Sometimes he keeps the painting in the sun and other times in the shadow to get different views from different angles. So is the case with the sculpturist as well. He too watches his creation from different angles to see if there is any fault or if there is anything could be improved upon and then he admires. He too watches. God is not against the will. If he has to be against, then why would he create? If you are against the painting that you have created, why would you go in the first place and create the painting and criticize it? You are interested in something, photography, painting, painting, you go and do, you put all your energies into it and you go on admiring. Would you go and criticize that I should have not done this or this or that? No. God is not against the world. If he has to be against, then why would he create? If you can understand that God created you and then he has washed you from all different angles, he has glorified you as his work and as this comes to your mind, sin will disappear from your mind. As this comes to your mind that, has, that God has created you and is admiring you from all different angles, sin will disappear from your mind. And all your actions will be guided by such an understanding. All around his eyes goes on looking for you alone. How many deviate from the path? Still you remain dear to him. You may deviate. You may flounder. You make mistakes, yet still you remain dear to him and he keeps on showering his bounty. Look at the father. Children go on making the mistakes and the parents go on showering. Who else should he look forward to get something that he needs? Yes, when I look into it, when he asks for something, I have to rationalize it. 
how much has to be given to him. In the same way, God does not give you all that you ask for. He gives you according to your capabilities, according to his wishes. If he wants to give you something, that is his wish. And if I have to give out of my bounties to the people, everyone has bounties. It is not that God alone, because God has created you, he has given you an opportunity. Everyone has bounties. Now it is up to you, you are miser or you are sharing your bounties. These are out of my bounties which I am sharing. This is not part of my work. God keeps on giving you every moment. He has glorified you as his work. And as this comes to your mind, sin will disappear from your mind. Then all your actions will be guided by such an understanding. All around his works, his eyes goes on looking for you and you alone. I have heard a man hired certain workers to finish construction of a wall. The wall was to be finished by the evening. He realized by midday that the wall is not going to come to an end. So he hired some more people midday to work until evening. But to those people also he gave the same amount of remuneration that was given to the people who was working from the morning. At this, the people who were hired in the morning complained. We are working since morning and these people have come midday and you are giving him same remuneration. He said that didn't you get what you asked for? You asked for a certain amount of remuneration I gave you. Why should there be complaint? I have. If I want to give everything to someone else, why is there a lament? You asked for something and I gave you. I want this work to be finished by evening. I hired more people. I gave him what I felt that I should give him. There should be no complaint. Many times we deviate from the path, yet still you remain dear to him. You may turn back or deviate or become a sinner, but his lamp of hope never vanishes. He always feels that one day you will return. You are like an ignorant little child who is moving between two corners along with his positions. Seeing him, the policeman stopped him to know the cause. The child says he is running from home, but his mother said no, to go beyond and run around. That is why I am here. So too, how far can you move away from the God? From God? All around is his boundaries. And wherever you go, you will find the same bound. Your anger is that of a small child. This is the part of love. This cannot disturb him. Nanak says he creates and then he goes on glorifying everything. He goes on watching that which he has created. He goes on doing all that appeals to him. Now, no one can interfere in his work. He is king among kings, be within his cosmic will, be within his will, and he is not egoistic that he will get angry if you go against his will. Father says to follow him, but if, he, if you do not, he deprives you of his positions. But this does not happen with God. If you are angry with him or if you go away from him, that does not mean the sunlight will not come to you or the rain clouds will not shower on you or he will instruct the rain clouds not to shower on this person or the sun. He is not egoist that he will get angry with you if you go against his will. This will certainly cause you pain and suffering. This is not the case of disobedience. It is like this, certainly you will hurt yourself if you try to walk through the wall. 
In that case, the world is not hurting your head. You are responsible. The door is available. Instead of using the door, you want to pass through the world. And this is, nobody is to be blamed for that. What is the door? Where would you find the door to enter the world? The door is the door to oneness or entry into God is total acceptance. Total acceptance of His will. The moment you start flowing with thy will, you have found the door. Because of your ignorance, you are suffering. No one is, else is responsible for it. The entire existence supports you and will go on supporting you till eternity lasts. You may hurt yourself and the existence will go on supporting you again and again. No one knows for how many lives you have been trying to pass through the world. Nanak emphasizes to remain within his cosmic law. That is thy will. And as long as you are flowing with his will, you have found the door. How would you know what is his hukum, what is his cosmic law? And how would you ascertain his will? Many thinkers get stuck here. It is understood be within the hukum. But what is the hukum, the cosmic law? How would you recognize his voice? Certainly there is a way. And the way does not come from thought. Thought can never know the cosmic law. One way opens as you begin to drown in the sound of the existence. The existential sound. Ego begins to dissolve. As soon as meditation deepens, you enter the realm of Samadhi. That very moment you hear him. Because the inner instruments are tuned, there is no discordance among these instruments. They all, when they play, they resonate in one tune. Amidst the noise of ego, you cannot hear the small voices. But when there is a harmony, there is no discordance. What you hear is his voice. Deep within there is a faculty, just like other sense instruments, there is an instrument that captures the voice of God. Eyes capture light. How does this happen? Science cannot explain as yet how the information does reach the mind that outside there is a beautiful woman or a flower or a sun or sun has risen. When the hand touches someone, then how does the mind know? Everything is happening on the skin. Just as five sense organs connect you to the outer world of duality, so too there is a faculty deep within. Mystics have called this as the conscience. When there is conflict and confusion, there is always a small voice within. It is not difficult to discover. And the mystics say that this is Anta Karan. Anta means inner, the faculty that lies deep within. Your thinking is the obstruction. The moment thinking ceases, you can hear the small voice. His will is the will. This Nana calls as Hukum. You are born with this. However, you have never used this faculty. You always rely on the others. You rely on this one and that one, this astrologer, that priest to answer your questions. And in the process, you have lost your inner faculties. You have never used this. And the entire process of the spirituality is to start using the instruments that have been given to you. To start trusting. It has been given to you. Meditation takes you to that source. That alone guides your step each moment. The moment you are connected to that voice within, there will be no soul. Life will be a celebration. The moment you can hear this small voice, 
you are directly connected to God. This connection will be from your son. Right now your connection is only from his side, this one thing. For transformation this connection has to be reversible. When you see the internet speed, there is an upload speed and a download speed. The download speed is high, the upload speed is low. Always when you do the speed test of your internet or the Wi-Fi, one is the upload speed is always low because when you are uploading the message of God, the speed is lower than when you are lamenting, you are downloading. Science is the way to establish this connection. Transformation requires that your connection has to be reversible. Only then you can know the way. Each syllable Nanak has spoken is beautiful and full of fragrance of his deep understanding. It is the soul, consciousness and the understanding that Nanak pulsates through these words. None of these words are ordinary. To understand the message of Nana, your consciousness has to transform. Only then you can listen to the words of, you can understand the words of Nana.